Happy Thursday, everybody. So some breaking news. Uh, the Supreme Court has ruled that race-based affirmative action programs are unconstitutional. It's been around for 45 years, and I guess one of the justices finally read the Constitution for the first time yesterday and was like, what? True, it's been a while since the Supreme Court treated the Constitution as anything but a paper towel for when Biden spills his insure. And the reason for the change is also the reason for tonight's monologue. It's been over 150 years since America banned slavery. But here's an interesting fact that folks at Reuters just dug up. I love Reuters. A lot of powerful people in the U.S., including our living presidents, Supreme Court justices, governors, and legislators, descended from slave owners. That includes Republicans Mitch McConnell. I'd say he took one on the chin, but we all know that's not possible. <laughs> but also Lindsey Graham, James Lankford, and Tom Cotton. Mm, Cotton, his name sort of gave that away. <laughs> That's a, if he ever ran for president, he yeah. should not use the, the slogan, pick cotton. Yeah. Not going not gonna to work in the cities. <laughs> I'm I would, sorry. I would not advise that either. <laughs> yes. All right. And if those old white men didn't surprise you, how about Dems, Tammy Duckworth, Jean Shaheen, Maggie Hassan, and Liz Warren? Right. That's got to be tough for... Those women of color, right? Liz Warren must be asking, how? How? <laughs> how is this possible? But the fun part, every living president is a descendant of slave owners. Well, except one. And can you guess which president is free of that ancestral shame? No, not that one. His ancestors owned slaves, and boy, did reparations just get awkward. And no, definitely not this one. His ancestors owned slaves, too. Though, to be fair, Joe was just a child at the time. <laughs> so who's the exception? It's true. DJT's the only one whose ancestors never owned slaves, although he was rude to some of his apprentices. I'll give him that. <laughs> and he's the guy the media had dubbed the biggest racist in the history of racists, right? Does it matter now? Well, it mattered to Reuters, or they wouldn't have done all that research. They wouldn't have thrown rocks at all those family trees, hoping to dislodge some of that sweet and juicy race bait. The media craves it the way hungry bears crave a beehive full of honey, or the way Brian Stelter craves a beehive full of honey. <laughs> so why isn't this a bigger deal, you know, that Trump's ancestors are clean? It seems newsworthy. I mean, remember during the 2012 presidential election, there was a big news story about Rick Perry's hunting ranch. It had a rock with a racial slur painted on it, which his family painted over in the 80s. Perry had nothing to do with it. The sin was committed before he was even born, yet somehow the media treated it as evidence that he was a racist. But then every Republican running for office is accused of racism, even if they're not white. Merely belonging to the party that freed the slaves is evidence that you want to bring back slavery, according to the freakish media. That's why they can call Larry Elder a white supremacist instead of giving credit for who he really is, a powerful spokesman for relief factor. <laughs> Of course, when you point out that the Democrat Party was the party of slavery and passed Jim Crow laws that kept the South so segregated, you'd think it was Martha's Vineyard. They'll tell you that today's Democratic Party is way different now. Cool. Then why can't the rest of America use that same defense? Because clearly, they're different from that era as well. Except it never works out that way, does it? Why doesn't Trump get any credit here? I mean, the worst thing his family ever bought and sold were buildings. Not one human ever. If slavery is a foundational evil, if we're all expected to repent for sins that were committed generations before we were born, why doesn't that guy get any extra credit? You don't have to like Trump or even think he should be reelected, but you got to admit, it's pretty weird that all those journalists did all that work to dig up so many facts about powerful per Americans, and they only mentioned Trump's clean hands in passing. 
I guess it's just a coincidence that the party of slavery and the people who vote for that party try to paint the one guy who sat in the White House who has no connection to slavery as the worst bigot ever. And when facts don't fit that assumption, it's just best to move on. So the media claims to want to remind us of our history, except when that history actually reflects well on somebody they decided is the face of evil. As Reuter puts it, quote, establishing the grim details of the history of slavery is essential to understanding the nation's past and bridging racial divides. Well, is it? Or is it just digging up ancient history to divide Americans even more? By the way, does this now make Trump exempt from reparations? I mean, he truly is the least racist president in history. And the irony of that is thicker than my file in HR. Let's hear tonight's guest. She's a political maven who gives the left no safe haven. 2024 GOP president candidate Nikki Haley. The only fire this pyro starts is in my heart. Co-host of Fox and Friends First Hot Pyro. She never gets up on the wrong side of the bed because she sleeps in caves. Fox News contributor, Cat Tim. And for his July 4th barbecue, he's grilling an entire Ruth's Chris. My massive sidekick in the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Tyrus. Governor Haley, thank you for returning to the show. We usually don't get returns. People usually do it once, and then they say, that's it, never again. It's great to be back. Oh, thank you, thank you. You truly are a politician. <laughs> what do you make of the Supreme Court decision? You know, I'll, I'll tell you, when my son was putting in college applications, he's like, Mom, Dad's white, you're Indian, I'm screwed. <laughs> right? I mean, that was the way he looked at it. And what I'll tell you is, look, I was born in a small rural town in South Carolina, mm -hmm. and we were the only Indian family. I became the first female minority governor in the country when I became governor of South Carolina. I went on to be UN ambassador. I'm now running for president. This is the best country in the world. We should be telling our kids, it doesn't matter what your background is. If you work hard, you can be anything you want to be. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to be talking about. I don't believe that. I don't think that's true. I could definitely not play volleyball. No, you can't. I've seen you. You have no athletic ability. No, it's actually astounding. It is. It's disgusting. Let's let's move on. The image is is horrible. Uh, Tyrus, welcome back. Good to see you. Yeah, just stepped off the plane. Excited. Yeah, yeah and then the plane just went Thanks, like this. Thanks, Mayor yeah. Pete. Whoa! <laughs> yeah. You get it? Uh, parking. It's big. And I stepped off. Yeah, they got it. It just sucked. Yeah. They got it. <laughs> Um, so isn't it funny that remember when Trump used to say he was the least racist president yeah, ever? Oh, well, apparently he has the he has the genetic proof. <laughs> you know, it's funny because they said you know we all come from slave owners. Some of us come a little closer than others. Yeah, it's my light skinnedness. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so it's not sensitive at all. Mm -hmm. The thing is about look scary white people. I love it. Just <laughs> laugh. It's fine. I'm light skinned. Okay. It was a lot of mixing and whatnot yeah. back then. Yeah. Still goes on today, even in this country. <laughs> Todd Crazy. Pyro just ran out of the building. Yeah, I know he did. He's, his parents are here, so he can't go too far. <laughs> but it does prove one thing. Uh, they'll say it doesn't matter whether Trump's ancestors owned slaves or not. They're right. It doesn't matter. Just like it doesn't matter that old Biden parents did own slaves, great great parents whatever the hell ancestors own slaves it doesn't matter there either right because it doesn't matter you hear where you are now mm -hmm. because of the effort that you put in or your family put in going forward so it really doesn't matter where your roots are it's what your flower looks like mm -hmm. so you know what i'm saying just Ooh, i like chill that out. yeah that was really nice thank you yeah did you come up with that no okay cat's texting me <laughs> But it's true. You shouldn't have to pay for what your ancestors did. No. We'd all be in trouble. I mean, God. This is what upset them. Yeah. Because they got him. Yeah. This whole thing was another dossier yeah. dig where Trump came from a long, long line of slave owners. Yeah. So after all the weeks and Clinton fund money, they're like, Yeah. <laughs> everyone but him? Yeah, everyone but him. <laughs> no. Yes. Uh, I guess print it. Yeah, Back and that's why, and story. it sank yeah. like a stone. Yeah. yeah, they were like for a Teddy Kennedy date. <laughs> hey, Todd. Hi. Still How are you? I'm well, and yourself, sir? Yeah, uh, uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. I, we did our own research on your ancestry. Sure. So your great great grandmother was Lizzie Borden. Yes. 
Yes. Uh, this is the first time we've re released this information, but I don't think it should matter that your great great grandmother was a homicidal maniac. Oh, she liked axes, <laughs> liked knives. Who doesn't? Yes. What do you make of the? What do you make of this uh, Reuters thing? Couldn't agree with Tyrus more. I, I mean, just because I'm Italian, am I in the mafia? Mm. You know, are my people connected to the mafia? You gave me a weird look. I just looked for Cap. Because I don't think journalist. anyone's ever thought you were in the mafia. <laughs> you mean? <laughs> this doesn't no. look like a mafia I, lawyer to me. Yeah, I don't think sure. anyone's. Look, sorry, I don't think anyone's ever thought you came from the mafia. I don't sure. think everyone's ever thought that you've known anyone from the mafia, that you've met anyone from the mafia, that you've been in the same room from the mafia. You'd be a good reading. informant, though. Uh, yes. Yeah, you should be an informant. You do give off informant. <laughs> <laughs> so last time I was on the show, you were like, you give off realtor at a convention. Now I'm a mob informant. <laughs> yes. I, I really. Yeah. Bad one. <laughs> that makes you a good person. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yes. You. What, were, so, what was the question? Where I don't remember. We, what show is this? I don't know. It's it's uh, it's called Gutfeld, and it's just we should change it to abusing Todd. We should. <laughs> it should be um, but the overall point, to, to Tyrus's point, none of that matters. Like mm -hmm. I don't care that Liz Warren is descendant of slaveholders. Just that I don't care that Donald Trump isn't. And I think if I could go to a, uh, I hate reading things on your show, but I thought Clarence yeah. Thomas thing really ties all these stories together today. In his concurrence, he said, every time the government uses racial criteria to, quote, bring the races together, someone gets excluded, and the person excluded suffers an injury solely because of his or her race. Mm -hmm. I think that's a common theme between both of these stories today. Nothing that is immutable to me, including my ancestry or my race, should determine what I'm supposed to do and who I am now in the present. That's what the left wants to do, and I think that is what this decision today tries to undo. Hopefully we can move forward as a country mm -hmm. going forward. I think we will move forward. I think we have moved forward from slavery. Yeah, we, do you think so? Yeah. Uh, I better tell my I'm, slave. I'm pretty confident we have. Well, we know that. <laughs> As in, yeah, we don't have it. Don't anymore. you think that that article by Reuters would have been a great thing to write about? Because it actually is saying, the, the results are saying exactly what you, but, but they didn't choose to go that path. Yeah, I saw it. This was, I was like, monologue. I was like, and it's a slavery. I was like, okay, interesting choice. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, I, my family didn't have slaves. Mm. I want to be very sure about that, too, so I texted my cousin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate reading things on the show, too. But... <laughs> Hello. I'm sure you're extremely busy planning your wedding that is in two days. <laughs> Congratulations, Courtney. Uh, but quick question. Do you know if our family was here during slavery? She said no. Mm. <laughs> what does she do for a living? She's a police officer. She's oh, a detective. Well, if she's a police officer, then I would trust Marrying her. Marrying another police officer. Fox loves it, right? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, what are they doing after the wedding? Can they do Fox and Friends? <laughs> All right. Quickly, before we go, in support of my new book, we're doing a virtual event July 27th at 6 p.m. See how I treat Tom backstage at our live shows and more insane stuff, too. For more info, go to ggutfeld.com. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.